Our breakthrough of the year is the uh, development of the first quantum machine and the achievement of the quantum ground state. These physicists at, at um, University of California did was they, they built a, a little tiny oscillator. This one doesn't exactly wiggle. It, it actually sort of um, gets thinner and thicker. And um, it's only um, a few thousandths of a millimeter long. And they uh, used a big helium refrigerator to, to chill it down to uh, within a few hundredths of a, hundredths of a degree of, of absolute zero. And uh, then they watched what it did. And they found that they could get it down to the point where it was at the absolute minimum amount of energy. Now, that doesn't mean it comes to a complete halt. Because of, of, there's a quantum rule that says that nothing can ever be completely still. So it was still wiggling, but it was wiggling at the minimal amount. And then using microwaves, they fed it a little packet of energy, which made it wiggle more. And that was the one quantum of energy. It was the smallest dose of energy, like one of those little, little energy packets that Pac-Man used to eat in the old video game. You know. So, um, and by doing this, they showed that they had achieved what, what they called the quantum ground state. Well, we have results from synthetic biology, including a, a group that uh, you've probably heard about that built an artificial genome, put it into a bacterium, and the bacterium used it to make proteins and, and reproduce and do all the things that bacteria do. It wasn't too long ago that scientists didn't know that you could get um, molecules thousands or tens of thousands of years old uh, from living creatures that, that had died that long ago and get it useful information out of them. Well, now they've managed to find out what the Neanderthal DNA was like and how it was different and similar to ours. Turns out that some of us are related to Neanderthals. People hadn't been sure about that before. There are techniques for reprogramming cells with RNA. Uh, cell reprogramming is a huge area of science. It's um, setting back the developmental clock of cells so that uh, they can become other kinds of cells. These are the stem cells that you've probably heard about. but not just the embryonic stem cells. If this works as well as people think it's going to, then you can take adult cells, and like a skin cell, and um, wipe out its programming and turn it into an organ cell or something else. There are new results in the uh, fight against AIDS. The first, um, a gel and a drug that actually uh, protect against AIDS and um, in, a, in a way that uh, had never been done before. One of these results got a standing ovation when the scientists presented it as a meeting. We have results from what's called exome sequencing, which is a sort of a streamlined gene sequencing approach. They take DNA and instead of trying to um, get the entire DNA code, they just take the parts that make proteins. That's just a little tiny fragment of it that speeds things up. And uh, when uh, scientists did this, they found that they could use it to find rare genes, rare mutations in genes that cause some uh, well-known diseases. Well, now physicists have shown that by um, making these artificial crystals using lasers and atoms, not actually, not an actual sub substance, but uh, what they, uh, sort of a, an optical lattice they call it, they can make these interesting, strange sorts of calculators that are very good at solving these particular kinds of equations. So like, like, they're like laser computers, sort of. Uh, we have um, what we call next generation genomics. A lot of um, results coming out of these new methods of, s of very fast gene sequencing, uh, which are uh, being used to study disease and, and um, a lot of um, aspects of human development. The scientists would love to have knockout rats, but for the last eight years, they haven't been able to make them uh, because the process that works in mice doesn't work in rats. Now they found out a way to do it. They use the same process they use in mice, tweak it a little bit, and they get knockout rats. And so um, I think that um, a lot of the labs in the world that are now using mice will soon be switching to rats.